Coming up, we'll answer your latest questions about the virus. Will kids be, still be able to go on the bus? Plus, the pandemic has put the squeeze, if you will, on lemonade stands this summer. But that's not stopping some creative entrepreneurs who are finding new ways to keep juicing the economy while also helping others. And we'll pay tribute to an American hero and tell you why John Lewis is a name you should remember. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition from my home to your home. Always great to catch you guys up on what's happening. As usual, we have some fun stories we'll get to in a moment. But first, coronavirus remains our top story. Dozens of states are still seeing a rise in cases, including Texas, Florida, and California, where I am right now. And officials are getting increasingly worried about people beginning to gather in those big crowds again. Maybe you saw some of those alarming pictures we showed on my evening program the other night. Health experts say crowds like this are a surefire way to spread the virus. Well, we know you all have a lot of questions, especially with school getting underway in some towns and other school districts starting soon. So let's bring in Dr. John Torres. Dr. John, let's get to the first question. Here it is. Hi, my name is Tyrick Flory. I live in Ward of Maryland, and my, I'm nine years old. I have two questions. One is, does coronavirus float in the air? The second one is, if it does and we have a mask on, can we inhale it? See, Dr. John, I like this question because we keep talking about masks as protecting other people, but this really gets down to the question, does it protect us? What's the answer? Exactly, and Tyra has a great question. And the answer is, it can float in the air, but just for a little bit. It can't go very far, because it's actually pretty heavy. And so when the virus comes out of your mouth, it's what we call respiratory droplets. Those can go, on the average, about three to five feet. And that's why we say six feet away from somebody else is the important measurement you want to make sure you're that distance. But on top of that, the masks, like you said, Lester, they actually protect other people from us, so we're not breathing the, the virus out and they can't catch it. But at the same time, it does give us some protection as well. So the best thing you can do is make sure they have a ma as mask as well, because that means you're protected from them and they're protected from you. All right. We want to hear now from some twin sisters who just celebrated a birthday. I am Allie. And I'm Emmy. And oh, we are twins. And our question is, when school starts, Will kids be, still be able to go on the bus? Also, we are nine now because our birthday was on Sunday. And I just have a question for Lester. Um, when coronavirus is over, can we still do Nightly News Kids Edition? Well, Allie and Emmy, first of all, uh, happy birthday to you. And thanks for that question. I sure hope so that we'll be doing this for a very long time. Listen, COVID and coronavirus, they have really rocked your generation, young people. And, you know, we're going to be feeling the effects of this for a long time as we, as a country, recover. And you guys are going to be the key to getting us out of this. Your imagination, how well you have coped with all this. So that's an important story uh, for us to tell. So I certainly hope that we'll be doing this for a very long time. Dr. John, I'll let you tackle the question about the school bus. And, and same thing, Lester, happy birthday to Allie and Emmy, congratulations, and I agree with you. These kids have the best questions, and so if we can keep this going, that's gonna be fantastic, get a lot of information out there. But to answer their specific question about the bus, here's what I think is going to happen. Yes, you can ride the bus, but you need to be very careful. The bus driver, the school system, they need to be careful. So I think what's gonna happen is, you're gonna be assigned to pods, which means they're gonna be maybe 10 kids, maybe 20 kids in your pod, that's the group you're gonna stay with the whole day. That means you're gonna get on the bus with them, you're gonna go through school with them, get back on the bus with them, and then go home. That way, if anybody in that pod gets sick, it's only that pod that gets sick. Other children don't get sick. And so I think that's what you're gonna see happen. But you still are gonna see buses, you still are gonna see school in a regular sort of fashion, although there might not be as many kids there every day, but it's one of those things that experts, school officials, teachers, parents, everybody's trying really hard to make sure you can get back to school. But the most important thing is that you get back to school safely. Yeah, and we feel so good about how well kids are adapting and holding up during all this. Dr. John, thanks as always for ask, answering their questions. You bet. 
Well, like other small business owners across the country, America's youngest entrepreneurs are feeling the squeeze during this pandemic. Coronavirus guidelines that help keep us safe, like wearing a mask or staying six feet apart, also mean running a lemonade stand isn't as easy as it used to be. But that's not stopping a few extraordinary kids. Natalie Morales has details. For six-year-old Judah Clements, manning the summer lemonade stand looks a little different this year. Because of the coronavirus, instead of the front yard, he's selling his drinks on Facebook and a new website, judabug.com. I've learned how to count money. I'm getting better at subtracting. I learned how to run a business. Across the country, fewer customers outside and new health guidelines means kids have had to get creative to get their product to thirsty customers. I just did. Outside New York, Jaden Magliaro turned his stand into an online raffle so that he could raise money for military veterans. Nothing is going to stop me from selling my lemonade. Not even a coronavirus is going to stop me. All of these baskets. So far, he has helped raise more than $6,000 for the Wounded Warrior Project. I'm going to do this until we got enough money to fix, help all the Wounded Warriors get their body back. And in Virginia, 11-year-old Cartier Carey is taking all the precautions he can. We put masks on, we put hand sanitizer on, we wash our hands when we're done with everything. He sells lemonade for a dollar a cup then uses the money to buy diapers so he can donate them to single moms in his community. I just came up with it and said, you know what, the, I'm not going to sell the diapers. I'm going to give them away for free. So far, he's made over $4,500 and helped dozens of moms in need. What are you hearing from the people that you're helping? I helped this mom. She grew up in a church home and she, she gave me like a tight hug. When I hugged her, it was a tight hug and she oh. said, he don't understand, I don't understand how many people I'm helping right now. And it it almost brought me to tears because she was crying and like she was speaking facts. Lemonade for sale. But don't be bitter if you can't have your own stand this summer. There's hope. Make lemonade. The lemonade company Country Time is sending $100 gift cards to kids under 14. And there's still time to apply. Maybe you can use the money to help donate to a cause you care about like Judah, Cartier, and Jaden, three creative kids, showing us the true power of that old adage, when life gives you lemons, make, make, make lemonade. lemonade. Make lemonade. For Nightly News Kids, this is Natalie Morales. All right, Natalie, thanks. And kids, keep up the good work. Now let's switch gears and turn to something really cool that's happening on the space exploration front. NASA's next mission to Mars is underway right now, and here with more is our friend Tom Costello. It'll take more than six months to get there. NASA's Mars rover, this one named Perseverance, is self-driving and mapping, equipped with microphones so humans can listen to the Martian surface. 19 cameras, radar, spectrometers, sensors, and probes, and drills to collect soil and rock samples that future missions will pick up. But the coolest feature of all, a miniature helicopter, a drone attached to the belly of the rover. The first aircraft to ever take off and land on another planet for aerial surveys. Mimi Ong is the helicopter project manager. Did you have to ask the Martians for a pilot's license and Martian air traffic control? <laughs> oh, I think they'll welcome us. It should be an exciting event on Mars. <laughs> The challenge, the thin Martian atmosphere is only 1% of our atmosphere. So engineers built a chopper weighing just four pounds with two rotors spinning eight times faster than a helicopter on Earth. It will fly autonomously just 15 feet off the ground. The rover itself will land in a crater, once an ancient lake. The perfect spot to search for signs that life once existed on Mars, the prime mission objective. NASA's ultimate goal, putting humans back on the moon by 2024, then use a lunar base to launch missions to Mars. 
All right, Tom, thanks. And kids, if you would like to learn more about this mission and Mars, you can go onto the NASA website, Mars 2020. And you can even print out your own boarding pass to go to Mars. There's some pretty cool stuff there. Finally, we want to turn now to an American hero. This past week, the nation is honoring longtime Congressman John Lewis. He was a civil rights leader who passed away at the age of 80. And no matter how old or young you are, John Lewis was a man of courage who fought for the freedoms we all enjoy today. 55 years ago, on a bridge in Selma, Alabama, John Lewis walked his way into history. He was just 25 years old at the time, but his journey into a lifelong fight for civil rights was just beginning. Generations from now, when parents teach their children what is meant by courage, the story of John Lewis will come to mind. An American who knew that change could not wait for some other person or some other time, whose life is a lesson in the fierce urgency of now. On March 7, 1965, Lewis and others set out on a peaceful march to help raise awareness about voting rights. We are marching today to dramatize to the nation, dramatize to the world, the hundreds and thousands of Negro citizens of Alabama, but particularly here in the Blackfield area, denied the right to vote. We intend to march to Montgomery to present certain grievances to Governor Joyce C. Wallace. Back then, black people in the United States did not have the right to vote. As they marched over the Edmund Pettus Bridge, the large group was met by troopers from the Alabama State Police, and it turned violent, as you can see in some of these images. History books would refer to this day as Bloody Sunday. The images shocked the country and ultimately led to the passage of the 1965 Voting Rights Act, securing the right to vote for all Americans, no matter their skin color. But it was that bridge on the way to Montgomery in the face of danger that so clearly defined John Lewis. History reminds us that on March 7, 1965, we love America so dearly, we were ready to die for her. A courageous man, Lewis went on to become a U.S. congressman, serving the state of Georgia for more than 30 years, fighting for equality. John Lewis was a gentle giant. Uh, when you think of the a modern civil rights movement, you can't forget the name and the impact that John Lewis had. He had his hands in several of the key, the most pivotal events in the 1960s, as well as the civil rights movement. John Lewis is a hero. The National Civil Rights Museum in Memphis honors John Lewis with a special exhibit. The civil rights leader was also a best-selling author, including co-writing a comic book trilogy for young readers. Thank you. Thank you. Lewis even attended Comic-Con, dressed in a costume of his younger self, recreating that historic march over the bridge in Selma with elementary school kids. It's important for all of our young people to get to know what happened and how it happened, that they too can bring about change by using the philosophy and the discipline of nonviolence. Sasha Ruderman marched with him there in 2015. He was a real life superhero so when I did meet him and when he came up to us it was like crazy it was, I was just like in awe. So did Desta Cherry. It's really cool to meet somebody that was actually there during the movement because without people like him um, I wouldn't I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. Earlier this week Alabama troopers met John Lewis again in Selma as he made his way across that bridge one final time. John Lewis's legacy, in my opinion, is he stood up and fought for justice and he wasn't afraid. What a gift John Lewis was. We are all so lucky to have had him walk with us for a while and show us the way. A tireless freedom fighter who spent a lifetime keeping America to its greatest promise, liberty and justice for all.
All right. Well, that's going to do it for us. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at NBCUni.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please take care of yourself and each other.